Russian troops are intensifying their attacks in Ukraine. These aren't military targets. They are places where civilians work and families live. Leaders from both countries are meeting for peace talks and the Biden administration is pledging to help Ukrainians. But we have to do absolutely everything we can do as an international community to try to slow Putin's progress. Plus, Douglas County is one step closer to picking a new superintendent. A Colorado veteran is busy running his own business and is hoping to inspire others to do the same. To be able to have all those skills that we learned in the military and transition them to a, a small business, it's pretty fun. In signs of progress, talks resume between Major League Baseball and the Players Union two days after the league cancels regular season games. Breaking news at 11, Arapahoe County deputies are giving an update about a deadly shooting involving deputies. Officials say it happened at an apartment complex near Harvard and Quebec. The suspect is dead, but deputies have not said how that person was shot or what led to the shooting. We are monitoring the news conference and we'll let you know when we learn more. Well, happening now, you're looking live at Ukraine, where Russian President Vladimir Putin says he isn't backing down one week since he ordered an invasion. He made those comments during a phone call with French President Emmanuel Macron. Thanks for joining us. I'm for thanks for joining us for Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Jessica Crawford. Leaders from both sides are meeting for a second round of talks in Belarus. Ukraine is calling for an immediate ceasefire. The talks come as Russian troops are taking more control of the country. Five major cities are partially or fully encircled by Russian troops. Faith Abube reports on Ukraine's effort to keep major cities on its control amid heavy Russian missile attacks. The onslaught from invading Russian troops hitting clear civilian targets like this university in the country's second largest city, Kharkiv. These aren't military targets. They are places where civilians work and families live. Ukrainian forces bracing for that miles-long Russian military convoy located 17 miles north of the nation's capital, Kyiv. U.S. officials say it has stalled, bogged down in part due to logistical issues, fuel and food shortages and fierce fighting by the Ukrainians. And a big reason why it stalled uh, is Ukrainian resistance. Western intelligence sources say Russian forces appear to have already encircled five major Ukrainian cities. The Russian military claiming it now controls the city of Kherson in the south. As the Kremlin's attacks intensify, Ukrainian officials say Russia's war has killed more than 2,000 people in just eight days. ABC's George Stephanopoulos questioning Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov today live on Russian television. The world is seeing civilians being killed in Ukraine by Russian bombs. The world is hearing the lies Russia is telling about those attacks. How can you defend them? I cannot comment conjectures. Inside Ukraine's largest children's hospital, sick children moved to the basement for shelter. Dr. Oleg Gordik saving lives while also sheltering in the hospital with his family. His 17-year-old daughter working as a nurse. I believe in uh, maybe in future, tomorrow. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. President Joe Biden is holding a cabinet meeting in about an hour to discuss the war in Ukraine. His administration also wants $10 billion in aid for the country. It's something Colorado Senator Michael Bennett says the U.S. has to stand up for the democracy and the Ukrainian people. We have to do everything we can right now to supply the Ukrainians with uh, lethal aid that they can use to try to fend off uh, this criminal Putin, this tyrant Putin. And that's what we're going to do. I, I think that uh, I do, my, my view is that we should not put U.S. troops uh, on the ground or in harm's way in Ukraine. And I think Bennett also says he doesn't think that we should put U.S. troops on the ground or in harm's way in Ukraine, as he just said. He says that's also the Biden administration's view. Thousands of Ukrainians fled the country, but many others are choosing to stay and fight. Men are becoming welders to make steel traps for Russian tanks, and women are ripping and braiding fabric for camouflage nets. We are creating nets to hide our military forces from snipers and different Russian forces. Vladimir Putin claims Russia's military is offering safe ways for civilians to escape. The UN says more than 1 million people have fled to neighboring countries. The EU is working on 
an agreement to guarantee work for visas for Ukrainians who fled to other countries. Some activists in the U.S. are pushing President Biden to offer the same. Douglas County will interview finalists for a new superintendent in less than an hour. The board announced two finalists a month after the board fired former press superintendent Corey Wise. Denver 7's Colette Bourlon takes a look at the candidates. The search for a new superintendent technically started in mid-February, so it's only taken the board a little more than two weeks to narrow down their list of candidates to these two finalists who they want to see in the superintendent position. Now, one of those is Erin Kane. She'll be interviewed at noon today during a public meeting. Her name's been floated around as the favorite. She's the executive director of schools for American Academy, a charter system. Kane served as interim superintendent for Douglas County Schools from 2016 to 2018. The other candidate being interviewed today is Danny Windsor, the executive director for the Parker region of Douglas County Schools, which he's been since the summer of 2020. Before that, he was with the district for over a dozen years. There was a motion to move Windsor forward as the only finalist, but that was defeated. Next Tuesday's board meeting will be the chance for public comments on the finalists with an interview panel quizzing them on March 10th. The last public comment session before hiring the next superintendent is set for March 22nd. As for Corey Wise, who was fired from the superintendent position he only filled for a little less than a year, he's taken a new job with Jeffco Public Schools. His attorneys did file an open records request back in February asking for any and all communications surrounding his firing from Douglas County. Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Parents are raising their voices about their children's education and lawmakers are listening. Colorado's House Education Committee is holding a hearing today on one bill that would require school districts to be more upfront. The bill is sponsored by Republican Tim Geithner. It would require school districts to post curriculum online. That includes textbooks and materials for all subjects, surveys kids are given in school, and information about a teacher's professional development or training. Being able to see what type of curriculum is being offered, maybe there's a better fit as I do that long-term planning. But it wasn't just e-learning that seems to have caused new tensions between parents and their schools. In districts in Colorado and across the country, parents have expressed their concerns about the teaching of race relations and history as well. Colorado lawmakers are also trying to figure out ways to reduce crime. A Senate bill proposes preventing crime through the Safer Streets program in the Department of Public Safety. The bill would give the department $10 million. It would require the state to issue requests for proposals to identify high crime areas. Once those spots are located, then local agencies can apply for grants from the state. The money would go towards improvements designed to create safer streets and neighborhood models that discourage crime. Denver leaders laid out a plan to reduce crime in the city last month. The police department plans to build on its precision policing model started last summer, which identified five crime hotspots in the city. The chief says the department will be adding three new locations. One of those is near La Pan and Mississippi. When we spoke with people who live in the area last month, the news came as no surprise. There are other areas like Five Points, downtown Union Station that are, I think are in absolute dire need of, of help right now and I think uh, are not, not seeing the help that it necessarily needs. Union Station isn't specifically considered a hot spot, but the police chief says that they are focusing some of their efforts there. In four of the five previously identified hot spots, the chief says sending more patrols out to the areas has led to a dramatic decrease in crime. Criminal charges won't be filed after a floor collapsed at a house party over the weekend. Three teens were hurt at the home in Arapahoe County. The sheriff's office says the case was referred to the district attorney's office, which declined to file charges. Well, when our nation's heroes return home from the military, many of them are ready to start their own business. Some are finding major barriers, though, when it comes to business ownership. But one Colorado veteran broke down those barriers and opened his own brewery. I was a nuclear weapons missile maintainer for the United States Air Force. The way David Levesque sees it, if you can launch a missile, you can launch a business. you got to think about it. The military is a business. Um, we do everything in the military from, you know, purchasing to supplying to, you know, training. It's nonstop. So to be able to have all those skills that we learned in the military and transition them to a, a small business 
it's pretty fun. Levesque owns Launchpad Brewery in Aurora. He was stationed at Buckley Air Force Base in 2007 when he tried craft beer for the first time. Shortly after, he started making his own. One day someone said I should open a brewery and I kind of laughed about it a little bit and uh, decided to open up. So we've been here since 2015. His biggest challenge, getting the capital. I think if there was a way for Congress to assist in the initial funding for businesses to start, I think that would help tremendously. If that problem is solved, he says more veteran owned businesses like his could thrive. We've been here since 2015. Um, we're going on our seven year anniversary. We're uh, 32 beers on tap. We've kind of just uh, been having fun, uh, brewing beer, selling beer, and then uh, enjoying the community. The Small Business Association hosted a virtual meeting this morning for veterans who are interested in owning their own business. There are more resources too, including the Pikes Peak Small Business Development Center and Volunteers of America in Colorado, which helps veterans with housing. You can find more information on these organizations on our website, denverchannel.com. Major League Baseball and the Players Union are meeting today for the first time since the league canceled games Tuesday afternoon. ESPN reports it's an informal meeting between the league's deputy commissioner and an attorney from the Players Union. Owners and players couldn't reach a collective bargaining agreement, forcing the league to cancel the first two series of the season. Still ahead, the White House is considering dropping the mask mandate on planes and other public transportation. Plus, a Colorado company is raising the standard for smart living.